So lately I've been thinking with 25 years of coaching experience and 35 years of lifting experience, if I could go back in time, what would I change? And in this video, I'm gonna share my top three things I'd change. I'd love to hear what your top three are down in the comment section below. So number one, lately I've been talking about how much I have been absolutely thriving from taking a more holistic approach with my training during the past 20 months. I reduced my weight training from five to six days per week down to three to four days per week and started incorporating more calisthenics into my training and more yoga into my practice, so more mobility, more flexibility, more functional strength training. So if I could go back in time, would I take a more holistic approach sooner? And the answer is absolutely yes. And Realistically, I mean, I did try. 20 years ago, I tried um, doing some yoga. There's two occasions, maybe three occasions, where I took a yoga class. I think one was like a power yoga class. Another one was more of a flow-based yoga class, and it just wasn't for me. I wasn't receptive to it. I was more of a, a meathead at that time. I just really wanted to lift things up and put them down. So it just wasn't for me in that moment. And when that functional training movement came along, it's probably 10, maybe 15 years ago, I just, I couldn't stand the terminology of a functional training. I'm like, bodybuilding is every bit as functional. I'm functional, I'm great in athletics, I can do so many different things, but I was also pretty naive at the time. I guess you could say that even closed-minded as biased in my opinion. It was kind of like someone was challenged my belief system that bodybuilding is the way to go and bodybuilding is functional, um, and I just wasn't open-minded to it. So I do believe that everything happens for a reason, the timing of it all unfolds the way it's meant to unfold, when it's meant to unfold, and um, honestly, I probably, like back then, wouldn't have gained as much of an appreciation for this more holistic approach to training as I do right now, just where I'm at mentally in my life as well, just through life experiences that have got me to this point. Just yoga hit me at the right time. I became receptive it to this time just because of everything that I went through here. But if I could go back in time, like 20 years ago when I was trying that yoga and a meathead at the time and really not embracing it, if I could like tell myself, like, it, it, just for a moment, just experience what I'm feeling right now, how much I'm thriving from taking this more holistic approach. I'm sure my younger self would have fully embraced a more holistic approach at that time. Um, and it would have been so great to start with this a lot sooner and being even more mobile and more functional with a lot of these different um, movements that I'm incorporating right now. But still, again, I'm loving it and embracing it right now. And it's pretty cool that an old dog is learning new tricks. Number two would be like recently, I shared it in a video why I stopped doing squats and deadlifts four years ago, almost five years ago there, uh, because of us continuing to injure my back with them. And yes, if I could go back in time, I would absolutely tell myself to avoid squats and deadlifts. And that's just me. Again, I'm, this, I'm just sharing from my personal experiences. I still program squats and deadlifts for some of my clients. A lot of guys and girls, women, thrive from squats and deadlifts. Um, and I did as well. And again, if I would have told myself when I went like all those years of absolutely loving and, and thriving from doing squats and deadlifts, if I told myself back then, don't do them, I would have been pissed off at that time. And there was like people, whoever, whoever was saying don't do squats and deadlifts back then, I was like, guys, it's just because it doesn't feel good to you doesn't mean it's not gonna feel good for me. I love squats and deadlifts, don't tell me to stop. But knowing that it led to the back injuries, even when I was lifting with great form and nowhere near failure, I would, I, I would love to avoid that back injuries. <laughs> and knowing also that like, if I'm being honest with myself, doing barbell back squats and doing deadlifts didn't improve my body, my physique, any more than doing hack squats, leg presses, Romanian deadlifts, or anything along those lines there. And taking away squats and deadlifts hasn't taken away from how my body looks, how my body performs. If anything, it's only gotten better since then. So again, this is just me. This is me going back to tell myself don't squat and dead, don't barbell back squat and don't do um, deadlifts there. Uh, it's gonna lead to eventually to a lower back injury for you. So I would love to avoid that lower back injury because it's like I've dealt with some other injuries, barbell bench press, which I don't do anymore as well, but um, it's like a little shoulder injury from the barbell bench press. 
is nothing compared to like when you hurt your lower back. Like that is, it's debilitating uh, uh, at times as well. So I would love to have avoided that injury. So for myself personally, I would tell myself to avoid the barbell back squats, avoid the deadlifts, just stick with uh, leg press, hack squats, other things along those nature, split squats, Romanian deadlifts, all those kinds of things to um, strengthen your body and to, to build your body that way. So that is number two. Number three would be bulking and cutting. I would avoid bulking and cutting, especially in my later years. So I lost 50 pounds of fat 13 years ago. And then I spent the next five years bulking and cutting where I'd gained 20 to 30 pounds during six to seven months. So a nice, good, slow and steady approach. And then I'd spend the next three to four months cutting that excess of fat off. And in the end, like very minimal muscle gains from that process. Like most of the weight gain was that 20 to 30 pounds was fat. So that's in my mid thirties that I was doing all of that after already several years of decades of lifting uh, under my belt at that point. So already close to my genetic potential or muscle gains were slower and just that excess fat gain didn't serve me any well. And the time that I spent cutting could have been spent being more productive with my, my lifts and feeling better throughout, uh, throughout just my performance and everything that I was doing there. So I would have loved to embrace what I've been doing for the past seven years, almost eight years now, um, where I've been taking an even slower and steady approach. Just when I'm going through a muscle building phase, it's like no more than 10 pounds. Really my sweet spot's gaining five to seven pounds. And now at this point, five pounds is definitely going to be max at this point because I just know I'm very near my genetic muscular potential and gaining any more than that uh, excess fat is just not serving me in any way, shape or form. So I would have stopped that bulking and cutting sooner. But again, like lessons learned, like I gained a lot of value from going through those bulking and cutting phases, like realizing, all right, at this stage in the game, it's pointless. But if I hadn't gone through that, I probably, I'd be at this point going, man, I wonder, I wonder if I should have bulked and cut. Uh, throughout that time. So now at least I know for sure <laughs> that that's not the case. It didn't serve me well. Maybe in the early years, like the first four to five years of lifting, doing some bulking and cutting during that time maybe would have benefited me. But anything beyond that, I think bulking and cutting, when you're gaining that kind of excess fat for just a little bit of muscle mass is, is pointless at that time. So those are the top three things that I changed. There's plenty more um, little things that I would change along the way with my nutrition, with my lifestyle. Um, but those are the top three, and I'd love to hear what your top three are down in the comments section below.